how is it possible that for 4,000 years, the things like caste, things like basic mythology can be preserved with such high fidelity, especially in an era for at least a couple thousand or two thousand years, you don't even have writing. Well, you're, you're asking me a, a, a cultural question, not a genetic one. So what you see in the genetic data from South Asia is an amazing process. So today in South Asia, almost everybody um, is on a gradient of ancestry with two poles, what we call the ancestral North Indians and the ancestral South Indians, with very few exceptions. The exceptions are people with your last name, Patel. Oh, yeah. Um, and as a minor exception, but it's interesting that that's your last name. Uh, but also people with uh, from Munda, like uh, who speak Austroasiatic languages or are admixed with them, or people who are Tibeto Burman speakers. But most people are on a mixture between two poles, ancestral North Indians and ancestral South Indians. And um, when you look at genetic data from India, it looks like what you see today in African Americans with people with relatively higher or lower proportions of, say, European and West African ancestry. And so it looks like a, a population in the process of mixture, like African Americans, who are the result of mixture in the last 10 yeah. or so generations between two, mostly two very different populations mixing in different proportions. But what happened in India is it froze. So the mixing started and then it froze. As And the freezing happened two to 3,000 years ago, and it froze because of cultural change. So what happens in India is you have a three-part change. You have a uh, arrival of three source populations, essentially parallel to what you see in Europe. There's a local hunter-gatherer population. There's what's probably a farming population, maybe also a hunter-gatherer population initially. And then there are these people descended at some level from steppe pastoralists. These are the three primary ancestral populations. They come together at the end of the decline of the Harappan civilization, which ends about 3,800 years ago. And uh, groups from this Harappan group, which we actually have sampled, and they're all on a different gradient, they mix with the steppe groups and with the local hunter-gatherer groups to form and coalesce to these two later groups, which we call the ancestral North Indians and ancestral South Indians. And then mixture of these two mixed populations form in the Gangetic plain, form people all along this gradient. And it's really a very simple mix of two sources. And then the cultural change happens, which locks in the caste system and people freeze and they stop mixing very much. And so what you see is instead of people collapsing to a point, which is what you see in Europe after this type of mixing yeah. process of these three sources happen in any one region, you see this gradient forming and it's stable. Um, and because of the enduringness of the caste system, you actually have a snapshot going back a couple of thousand years and uh, without this continuing change. Um, and so, so, so it's kind of an amazing system genetically to look at because of people's reluctance to mix with people yeah. from very different groups in traditional communities. Um, and uh, so the three steps are uh, uh, coming together of very different populations and then convulsive, profound mixing of groups that had previously not mixed, and then locking into this static system uh, as the caste system sets in, which is documented in the early texts like the Rig Veda. Mm. And you can actually see the change in that discussion during the course of the Rig Veda. I, I know you warned about being too interested in yourself, but what, what, what was it about the Patels? Why are they an exception? <laughs> so the first good <laughs> genomic data from South Asians is embarrassingly from Houston, Texas. So in the Human Haplotype Map Project, there was a sample from Houston, Texas, of Gujaratis in yeah. Houston, Texas. A lot of hotels in Texas. G I H. And <laughs> if you look at them, people are actually not on this gradient, but they're in a few different places. They're clustered into groups, and there's the main gradient and there's an off gradient group. Mm. And I forgot how we figured this out, but someone figured out that these people are all Patels. And Patels have their own distinctive history with different re relationships to people in Central Asia. And it's probably some additional ancestry from Central Asia pushing them off the main gradient. Interesting.